Aloha, and welcome back to the Matrix of Peace show brought to you by ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Police, and the CEO of Peace Through Commerce. Joining me today is our guest, Joan Blades, to talk about how to avert another January 6th catastrophe by creating trust in elections. Joan knows something about helping to avert a mass action like this. She is the, a successful political activist and the co-founder and past leader of MoveOn.org, a public policy group and a political action committee. Because the results of the 2024 U.S. elections are going to be questions, Joan and her team at livingroomconversations.org offer a scalable, structured conversation tool that can begin to achieve some key outcomes that will lead to trust in elections. So with that, aloha, Joan. Hello there. Great well, to be here. Very glad to have you calling in, I know, from Berkeley. And just, just to review where, we, where we're going to be going today, what prompted you to start this initiative? We can see what's coming. We know that trust in elections is at a low. And if we don't do something now, we have every reason to believe that there's going to be serious trouble come November. Mm. So we have a short clip to bring into the room the reality of that possible outcome. And if Mike would play it for us, let's just go back to those days on January 6th when the election was contested. Okay, that was brought to us by the Library of Congress, that video clip, and it was uh, created to send out, as people could see the 800 number there, uh, a request that every citizen in the United States participate in finding the people who perpetrated that atrocity and uh, bring us to justice. And that's, that's, that's the tail wagging the dog of where we want to be coming up this November. We don't want that. And you've been around the block, Joan, on helping people get to peaceful, intelligent resolutions of con conflicting ideas and beliefs. And so can you talk to us a little bit about your background and what this Trust in Elections initiative is? It's a matter of really democracy, life and death, to get this right this time. Around the block. Uh, it's hard to say which part of the block to talk about, but I think I'll talk about the living room conversations more than anything, because, you know, being from Berkeley and doing move on, I really had a point in particular around climate change where I went, what's going on? Why do people see things so differently than I do? And I had the opportunity to be intentional about meeting people that had very different viewpoints than I did. And so when uh, we got to the point where it was less possible to have a good conversation with someone on the right, mm -hmm. climate, than it was in 2006 by 2010, Living Room Conversations is an opportunity to talk to people, talk to people and really hear them. So, the exciting thing about trust in elections is fairness is a value shared across the political spectrum. Trustworthy elections are something that the vast majority of people want. And elections are local. We are personally responsible for our local elections. We can do if we show up to do it. I don't want to be 10 months from now saying it wasn't right. I want to fix it now 
So 10 minutes from now, we can say to anyone that questions the integrity of the elections that our elections were fair and they were trustworthy. That's the goal. And the only way we can do this is if a massive number of citizens show up and own it. And what's exciting is you can do the local piece, but there's now the technology to connect people across the country. So this is beginning, potentially the beginning of a really meaningful trust-building project that would be so good for us as a democracy. But more than that, we need to build trust in each other regardless. It's a, it, after November, we need to continue to build trust because our trust in each other, in our institutions, in the media has diminished so dramatically. We need to turn that around. You know, um, we, you and I are sitting here talking about what seemingly is the impossible. Uh, it, and you and you love it. I know you're going to say, "Bring it on." Um, it 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 has to start. Do you have any? Uh, I know that you have some metrics some, that have shown that your living room conversations initiative, which started how many years ago now? 2010. In 2010, so about 13, 14 years, you have a track record on making a difference. And do we? You know, it, it can go to scale, right? I want the the, what we're going to show the viewers today is a day in the life of what it's like to have one of these dialogues, how to get involved, how to do it, and how to invite other people into the room. Uh, and but but it isn't pointless at all. So what are some of your metrics, your your results? The first I should describe the conversation so you can right are typically four to six people. So they're intimate and they're very structured. They have three rounds so that the introduction you get to get a sense of who the people in the room with you are. The content in the second round is about your personal relationship with that topic. And the end is just reflection and next steps. It's not a debate. It's a listening practice. And in 2019, we did a research project mm -hmm. that revealed that both the in-person and the video conversations had the impact we were looking for in terms of making connections and having people be more curious and get nuanced and have build some listening skill. Mm -hmm. As we think we want to be skilled talkers, being a skilled listener is remarkably powerful. So, so you know that it's working and it can go to scale. Um, I know that people want to talk about this. So you've you've got a need. People need to be talking about it. They want to be talking about it. And you have a very curated process that's been tried and true through living group conversations that you're now porting over to this trust in elections initiative. And it, so I, I want and I want the audience to know, I mean, I I don't I didn't check with you about your political where you are in a political spectrum, but I want people to know where we're coming from, where I'm coming from at Peace Through Commerce is a transpartisan place, if that means anything to you, that we're not, I'm not, we don't identify with any party. Uh, we identify with unity. And, you know, one of our, one of our beliefs is that values unite, but beliefs divide. And our work is to get towards this. You talked about it. Everybody shares the value of wanting to see elections that they can trust. And, you, and you're, you're positing that everybody shares that. So now what do they do to coordinate their beliefs, even if they're different? And uh, so we, we just want people to know that, that we want to allow that listening component wherever whatever perspective you're coming from so that you can move into true dialogue so and not she, debate yeah not 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 that debate is wrong but true dialogue so as you talk people. about the trust uh, yeah being transpartisan i'm clearly a progressive um and but i have partners that are conservative and living room conversations was started with conservative and independent partners 
the conversation guides are open source. So it may be you have one living room conversation a weekend, but we could have 10,000 in a weekend because it's open source and doesn't require a facilitator. That conversation guide holds mm -hmm. the conversation in a really uh, productive way. And we've been doing them in libraries. We've been doing them in schools, you know, in addition to living rooms and in faith communities. So it's a good thing for a community to build their connections. A lot of them do them monthly. Mm -hmm. Some individuals do them weekly because they just enjoy that way of having a conversation that is a, that is deeper than your average run-of-the-mill conversation. This does sound like the slow food movement applied to dialogue. It weren't. It's and yet. I, I do believe you're going to get we're going to get traction we need before November if we can catalyze these 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 uh, living room conversations on on the topic of trust in elections widely and you have I know you have a platform for local and national conversations so let's get to the meat we have we have an opportunity today for people to actually go through what it's about so what I I, I know. There's more to say about the opportunity. Have, do you feel like we've covered it all? We also even have a slide to give people a chance to slow the slow this show down and take a look at the opportunity and the bullet points that you have there in slide four. Um, do you feel like we've talked about each of those or is there something else you want to highlight before? I think it's important for people to just realize that you have a lot of impact locally. Mm. You can make things happen. When I had my first trust and election conversations a couple of months ago, I was super pleased to find everybody at the end of the conversation talking about things they could do to make elections more trusted. Mm -hmm. And it's going to depend on the community you're in whether you know how far along you are and the reality is we may think we know about our local elections and say yeah they're trustworthy but once you talk about it you probably want to get a few more details because if then you feel confident or if you have any places where you think wow we could do it a little better here mm -hmm. you can make those changes so that then we can connect people across the country to talk to each other about why they believe their local elections are trustworthy. And that's, you know, it's the beginning of building. It's not, it's not the final destination. There's all sorts of great groups that we already have listed on our trust in elections page at Living Room Conversations that have more resources. So mm -hmm. people can do workshops if they need facilitation because you know, six people is four to six people is a really good number for having an intimate conversation. But if you need to make some changes locally, you may need someone to help with a larger group event to focus everyone and be effective. And there's a whole dialogue and deliberation community that would love to do that and mediators. And that's there's richness out there. We just need to tap into it. And are some of those resources available on livingroomconversations.org? It's .org, right? Yes. Uh, .org. And you go to, we, we'll give you the link uh, it, within this show, or we'll leave it in the um, breadcrumbs where the show lives online, where they can go and they can get a kit, right? They can download a kit. You might be able to put them in touch with facilitators or they could read about resources for facilitation and bridging divides. Go ahead. I can tell they you. They can one. scroll to the bottom of the page and they'll see there's numerous links to other organizations that have really good materials for trust in election. Okay. And I just want the viewers to know, I think Newsweek uh, covered a story on your trust in elections initiative. Uh, you've gotten grants from Fetzer Institute, which is very high is that right is that very high level with our um our research I, 
highly respected uh, folks there trying to make the world a better place. And so for those of you who want to try this out, you, you couldn't be in a more loving and in wise, I think, support group uh, to, to help you through this conversation and dialogue experience. Also, what I like, Joan, about the platform, if you meet weekly or monthly, that allows for changing in events and changing in who's running and what the issues are. It allows for the people to digest together these changes in the landscape that we are all working towards, trust in elections. We have over 150 conversation guides. Uh, and often people start with one conversation and it can lead to another. You know, we have a couple even linked on the conversation page because, you know, you may have the trust in elections conversation, but then you may find that some of the people want to have does my vote really matter conversation or a conversation about elected officials because, you know, we've seen that people that are elected to school boards and people that are elected to help with polling in some communities, they found that to be punishing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to punish good people that show up to try and help their community. Can we make our communities resistant to that kind of behavior? I think taking that ahead of time, having that conversation and creating clarity in the community, this is the kind of behavior that we want. This is the kind we don't want. Mm -hmm. and, you know, violence around elections is part of what we don't want. Right. People to feel safe. So in that regard, we have a slide that we could share that takes people. You've shown telling us two steps of the process. We want to kind of go over it again and how the, and then I'll we'll look at how this process fits in the larger ecosystem of society through the lens of the matrix of peace. So you want to do you want to just recap one and two and tell us a little bit about rounds three and four? Well. Um, rounds one, you know, if you have a very diverse group, it's particularly important to get a sense of people's deeper values. You kind of go, oh, we listen to each other when we feel connection to them in a way we just don't listen to each other mm -hmm. if we're not connected and seeing each other's humanity. And that's one of the things we've been having some trouble with is not seeing each other's humanity. It's is actually very disturbing. And for the topic, it's like, do you trust your local elections? You talk about if you trust, why you trust, what is trust to you? It's a reflective process. And as we listen to each other talk about it, we often find that we deepen our own understanding of our own beliefs. I find that again and again in living room conversations. Mm. And the final round, you know, is short. It's just reflection and next step. Mm -hmm. And this particular conversation really seems to lead to next steps, which honestly thrills me. As in this case, I think we need to take some serious next steps. Mm -hmm. You know, you started out by saying step one allows people to understand each other's humanity. And that is a distinction between your moveon.org platform, which wasn't at all, that was just all uh, internet, right? You, you voted through internet. And what happens with living, not that one's better or worse than the other, but then the way they're different. By having these conversations, you do meet people. It isn't just blogging or Twitter X, or it isn't just people doing anonymous, faceless uh, rants. It's, okay, I stand up for living room conversations there. Not yeah. Living, uh, for move on, move on. Did house parties? They did, oh, they oh, did I didn't know. They did. Okay. There were all sorts of in person as well as it's meeting people where they're at. Okay. I don't want to, as an organizer, I want to meet people where they're at. Right. And the reason this project is a lot more challenging than any other I've taken on. Is because it's meeting people where they're at at a time when people have been trained to distrust each other, gotten more and more anxious about talking across differences. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to 
bring down that discomfort and fear mm -hmm. and nurture the we are in this together because we've stopped feeling that sense of in this together in too many cases. Mm -hmm. And it's a much, it's a bigger ask to ask people to show up personally mm -hmm. in yeah. this kind of conversation. Showing up with a group of people that agree with you doesn't feel very scary and it's really lovely. And I love to do it. That said, I think we need to take this further step and I can testify that it expand, it's expanded my world. I've learned a tremendous amount. You know, people go on these very adventurous vacations. Think of this as an adventure. <laughs> and because yeah. it is, and we have all sorts of differences, but we can find the connecting spots and move out from there. Mm -hmm. So talking about where you are and finding the spots, I want to go just briefly through where this work fits on a map of society that we've created at Peace Through Commerce called the Matrix of Peace whole systems model of society. And it's you're seeing it now, and it's it's a traditional Venn diagram, and we're using the wisdom within it. Some people call it sacred geometry, is what Venns are the, the discipline that they're coming out of. And that there could even be formulas for co-creating the intersections that that are that represented by the Venn diagram, that there are that they're really formulas that we haven't completely discovered yet. And by using a Venn diagram to, to visualize what peace looks like and what it doesn't look like might open up a whole new plethora of tools for us as human beings to step into the sacred geometry. And what this, the way it's constructed is there are three basic sectors of society, all societies, the public, private, and civil society sectors. And you can call them community and laws and business at maybe middle and developing countries, but every every basic society with sort of three or more people it, it, it has these overlapping sectors. And overlapping is the key. When they do overlap, they co-create what we believe are the necessary but sufficient conditions to societal peace, and that is justice, prosperity, and sustainability. And each of the intersectionalities of the sectors can co-create those outcomes and, or not. And when you have all three, justice, prosperity, and sustainability, you then have those necessary but sufficient conditions to support societal peace. Uh, and when you don't, we'll look at the next slide, when those sectors are not intersecting, then you can't get to what we see, the map changes. There is no way to get to justice, prosperity, sustainability, and the superordinate intersection of peace. How do we get there? We get there through that fourth component of the model, which is the outside circle. It's a in sphere in a 3D sense called the consciousness sphere. And within that sphere is embedded the values that we know unite, the beliefs that can divide, and, all, and of the emotions and the intangibles. And where living room conversations and this trust in elections initiative platform lives on this model is working in the consciousness sphere, helping move people from outside sector thinking, silo sector thinking into the intersections of justice, prosperity, and sustainability. And you don't get there automatically. It really is through consciousness practices, dialogue, listening, and the values that 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 support. So let's move forward and look at some of those values. I think we have another slide here that uh, that lists the values coming out of the com well, we have conversation agreements. Let's talk about that first. So these agreements, actually embody the agreements that you have listed through the kits that people can use. It embodies those shared values. So in just a few minutes, if you want to touch on a couple of them. 
Well, the be curious and listen to understand, which we start with, that curiosity is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. If we can be curious without doing the judgment piece, it opens us up and showing respect. People don't, you know, you've lost the connection if you're not showing respect. This is all about owning your part of the conversation. I know so many people that have found these conversation agreements, which people go into a conversation and they know how to do this. This is basically what we learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. and, and they're good at it. And it's a reminder. And then they take it beyond their living room conversation into their lives in very productive ways. Um, I can't recommend the conversation agreements enough. And there's a long form of them that goes into more detail about it on the website. But this is the essence of it. Right. Well, and you know, when they, when they see these agreements, it allow them to talk about that. What does it, what does that mean to you and show respect and suspend judgment and no common grounds and be authentic and welcoming, purposeful and to the point and own, you know, the, and own and guide the conversations. Those are just, those are the shared values that help move people into what we call matrix intersectionality on the road to justice on the road to prosperity, on the road to sustainability, sustainable behaviors and peace. And we have just a minute, maybe a half a minute to share conversation topics. You've raised some of them. They're on the next slide. On uh, it, 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 There's five bullet points there that start the conversation. So what impact does trust or the lack of trust have on you? Or when in your life have you intentionally built trust? Uh, how do you define trust? and when you think about voting, what hopes and concerns do you have for building trust? And those are excellent, excellent prompts to uh, start these conversations. And then we've got a final slide on citizen, what people can do to get these conversations started. If you could see that there, uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to be directive here because we're running out of time. But you already said these conversations, hundreds are happening today where people get together as friends, through libraries, through faith communities, through national organizations like the League of Women Voters or Rotary. These are natural affinity groups within which you're gonna have different beliefs, but hopefully shared values. And we can build on that. So uh, any final parting comment, Joan, before I whisk us Thank away? You. I, and I want everyone to try this and then tell us about it because what we, you learn, we need to learn and then we need to share it with others. We need your stories. We need your, your stories of how you impact your community. It's we do. Exciting. We do. So everyone, we, we'll have to leave it there. You have been watching the Matrix of Peace show brought to you today by Think Tech Hawaii. Sorry, got a little interference there. I'm your host, Phyllis Gleese, the CEO of Peace Through Commerce. And joining me today is our guest, Joan Blades, talking about how to avert another January 6th catastrophe by creating trust in elections. And you can do it. Only you can do it. Mahalo, Joan, for joining us and mahalo to our viewers for tuning in. We will be back with another edition of The Matrix of Peace. Aloha.